passage from Luke that we just heard read is Luke's phenomenal to the birth narrative. It's full of imagery and characters. We have, been, we have Jesus being presented to circumcision in the temple by his father, Joseph, and his mother, Mary. And we have two elderly people, Simeon and the widow, Anna, who are waiting to see the Messiah, at which point they will know that their God-given mission is over. Now, Simeon and Anna were not associated with the temple hierarchy. They were not priests. Also in the story, we have the two turtle doves, the two young pigeons offered as sacrifices. Sacrifices to be released to the heavens, a gift from those being blessed to heaven. Oh, and we have the Holy Spirit. And in this case, the Holy Spirit was found and being religious and being ritualistic. You probably know where I'm going with this now. <laughs> <laughs> the passage indicates that Mary and Joseph are obeying the law by presenting the baby boy on the eighth day to be circumcised and includes what the law prescribes. Sort of. Luke wasn't great with all the Jewish traditions. The, we have a conflation of, of circumcision and the purification of man after the birth of a child, uh, which was known in 40 days. But we've Luke conflated this for us. And one was really supposed to sacrifice the lamb for the, <coughs> this occasion. Unless you were poor. And if you were poor, then you could sacrifice the turtle dove or the pigeon. So Luke's statement to us about the, what was being sacrificed is that Jesus was from the poor. This part of the passage of following the law, marking his acceptance into this covenant community by getting a blessing is in reality telling us who Jesus is. Simeon, who is devout and ritualistic, giving the blessing, and we're all familiar with it, or most of us, the nunc dimittis, which is Latin for now you dismiss. Simeon's song is one of our candles in the prayer book. Simeon is guided by the Spirit to the one he has been waiting for. Waiting for the light to shine on the world, on both Jew and Gentile. <coughs> Simeon brings both good news to the family and bad news. The epiphany of Simeon. I want you to notice how I worked in the word epiphany during epiphany. In the, the 8.30 service wasn't impressed. You don't seem to be very impressed. I thought the epiphany of Simeon now has us between winter and spring, between the incarnation and Good Friday, between bringing salvation and bringing judgment, between those who embrace the light and those who reject it. Then there's the prophet Anna, the elderly widow, representative of all the widows, representative of those who are marginalized. And Anna prays night and day and fasts. Her piety is exemplary. And upon seeing the child Jesus, she praises God and the child. And there's many more levels in this passage. But what might some of this story mean to us today? <coughs> One thing that I see is that God can and often does when we allow it meet us in ritual and in our piety. 
They may say that being religious and following ritual with a healthy mix of the Holy Spirit brought all these characters together in this passage. Salvation was seen by those waiting to see it as they performed their acts of piety and repetition, which many of us in the modern age scoff at because these acts are mundane and devoid of spontaneity. Well, that is where I believe we are wrong. Yes, being religious, not expecting anything new today, is certainly limiting and boring. But being religious, expecting to see salvation walk through the door any moment, is being spiritual. And we've all heard this, I'm spiritual but not religious. I've not only heard it, I've said it. And most of the time, I think, from my own personal experience, that it can be interpreted this way. I don't want to get out of bed because you don't put on a new show every Sunday. And I'm not expecting anything different today. That's not about you. That's from my personal experience. <laughs> my friends, we are called to show up, as did Mary and Joseph show up with love in their arms. We are called to show up as was Simeon and Anna called to be present, to be prepared to recognize love <coughs> and to fulfill our promises, to be in relationship with one another. And catching the glimpse of that glorious light in each other's faces. We are called to expect something new today. To dance with the Holy Spirit. Have you danced with the Holy Spirit? <coughs> try to hold the Holy Spirit back. It will take you on a wild ride. But most of us don't want to go there. We are called to expect something new, to expect something new in this community, not the status quo. We are called to expect something new in our lives, to be transformed into that light that shines into the face of a needy world. I don't believe we are called to remain the same person. 